Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin' here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be going over five quick, easy effects to add to your clips. Just give them that bit more impact in your edits using Adobe After Effects. You can also do the same thing in Premiere Pro. As well as other editing softwares, the techniques are exactly the same, just the names of the effects might be slightly different. Just before we get started, I'd like to say I've made several other tutorials all revolving around Valorant montages and edits, which can also be used for any game, whether that's CSGO, Fortnite, Rainbow, whatever. So make sure you check them out with the link in the top right corner right now as the end code on this video and also in the description. Without any further ado, let's get into this. So the first effect is going to be a simple scale. Something like a scale lends itself really well to be combined with other effects and you'll find that's the case with many of these effects. If you layer them on top of each other and use them together you can create a really cool effect where you have it scale up, it flashes and blurs at the same time and it makes the kills hit a lot harder than if you were to just add one or the other. Of course you know it's completely up to you and your personal preference but I use a lot of these in conjunction with each other for the majority of my edits. So with a scale all you're going to want to do is go through your clip and find the point where you get the kill. Now with rifles and SMGs and pistols and things like that, you're gonna to want to wait until you see the kill appear in the top right corner. So I'm gonna keep scrubbing through this clip frame by frame until I see the kill appear in the top right, which is right here. And I'm gonna go back to the exact frame where I get that kill. So that's right here. And then I'm gonna press the asterisk or the star on my numpad and that's gonna add a marker to my clip so I know exactly where that kill is. Now where you put the markers is going to be slightly different depending on what gun you're using. So if you're using a sniper rifle, you're going to be changing where this marker goes. And I'll explain that when I get to my final effect, which is called optics compensation. And that's what I would use for sniper rifles. Now, once you've found where your kill is, you're then going to want to come down over to your clip, hit the down arrow, hit transform, and you'll see scale. Or you can just press S on your keyboard and it'll bring up the scale options. Now what you're going to want to do is make sure that your current time indicator is on the marker itself where you get the kill. Now you're going to decide how scaled in it's going to be at its maximum. So for me, that's going to be about 115, which is around here. You can go to 120, you can go to 130. You could just go in by 5% if you want to. It's really up to you. And it's just going to control how intense the effect is. So I want it to zoom in to 115% and then bounce back after I get the kill. So now that it's at its max, you're going to see that it's 115 throughout the entire clip, which is not what we want. So I'm going to make sure I'm back on that marker where I get the kill. I'm going to click this little stopwatch next to scale and that's going to add a keyframe so that now at this frame where this keyframe is, it's always going to be 115 regardless of what we do to the rest of the clip. So if I now go back one frame and I change this back to 100, you'll see before this keyframe where I set it to 100, it's going to be 100. And then after the keyframe I set it to 115, it's not going to be 115. Now this is a bit abrupt, it just sort of bounces in as soon as you get the kill, which is kind of what you want. But then on the way back out, you want it to be a bit slower. So I'm going to go forward about 20 or so frames, something like that, and I'm just going to keyframe it straight back to 100. And you'll notice that in between these two frames, it's going to scale out slowly. So if I play this for you... As you can see, it does this sort of scale effect as I get the kill, so it just bounces off when as she dies just like that. Now if I wanted to increase that because maybe that's not enough I can change it to 120 later on and then that will update so long as I make sure I apply the effect on the keyframe that I had set to 115 before it will now zoom in even further which you can see just adds a little bit more bounce to it. If you want it to animate in as well as out you can always drag this keyframe out a little bit and you'll see now it will zoom in and bounce off of when I get the kill. Now that's a bit too slow for my liking because I'm just going to drag these a little bit closer and do something like that and we'll see how that looks. So you see it now bounces in as soon as you get the kill. I prefer to have mine like this where it, also, where it scales in straight away without any animation to begin with and then slows down afterwards as I just think that looks a bit better. Of course, you can control how intense it scales in. You can drag this final keyframe back further and that means it will come out. It will zoom back out slower, but it's really up to you. And this really lends itself well with adding flashes and blurs as well. So if you were to add a flash and blur to this, it would just make the effect hit a lot harder as this on its own is kind of weak. Now onto our next effect is the flash. So you're gonna have the key, you're gonna have a marker exactly where you get that kill again. And then you're gonna come over to effects and presets. So you're gonna type brightness and you'll see brightness and contrast and you're going to drag that onto the clip. Then you're going to hit this down arrow, come down to effects and you'll see brightness and contrast and you're just going to, on the frame where you get the kill, which is going to be on your marker, you're going to drag the brightness up to a point that you think is acceptable. So I'm going to go to 75 and I'm going to hit the stopwatch to keyframe it, go back one frame just like we did with the scale and drop it to zero. 
and you'll see it will now automatically add a keyframe. And I also get the kill, bang, it will flash. I'm gonna go forward about 20 frames just like I would with the with the scale, and I'm gonna put it back down to zero. And you'll see now, if I play the clip, you'll see it will get the kill, flash, and then go back to normal. As you can see, that's just a simple effect, which again lends itself really well to being mixed with a scale and a blur, which once I've done those three, I'll show you what that looks like when you combine them all together. And now onto our next effect, which is a blur. So again, you're gonna do the exact same thing where you put a marker on where you get the kill, which is right here. And you're gonna come over to the effects and presets and you're gonna search for Gaussian blur, which you can see right here, blur and sharp on Gaussian blur. And you're gonna drag that straight onto your clip. You're gonna hit the down arrow just like you did with the other ones down to effects, down to Gaussian blur, and on this marker you're going to choose how blurred you want it to be by dragging up this little blurriness option. So I'm going to drag it up to about something like 10 I think looks good, we'll go for 10, and I'm going to hit the stopwatch to keyframe it, go back one frame, set the blurriness to zero, and you'll see before this keyframe it is not blurred at all, after it's blurred, go forward about 20 frames or so, somewhere like that, and I'm going to set the blurriness to zero, and now if we watch this, you can see it's very subtle, whether you pick that up on video or not, I'm not too sure. I'll change it to full and zoom in so you can sort of see what effect it's having. You see it's just a really subtle, as you get the kill it just blurs, and this works really well with a scale and a flash. So I'm going to quickly add these three effects together and show you what that looks like when you add it with this flash and the scale. So as you can see I've just added the Gaussian blur and the brightness and contrast and all the keyframes are lined up exactly as we had them before. I did actually have the scale not last quite as long so I think we'll just drag that up. And now as you can see they're all, be at, they're all at zero until they hit this keyframe where it will scale in, the brightness will go up and it will also blur. So now if we watch this through, you can see that just hits a lot harder and they work much better when they're all put together. So as it comes in, bang it hits, scales blurs and flashes and then it zooms back out again and goes back to normal until you get the next kill. Now onto our next effect which is slow motion. So you'll see in lots of montages after they get a kill it will go into slow motion for a short amount of time. Again this also works if you add the blurs, the flash and the scales with it. However you'll have to adjust the length of how long those blurs, flashes and scales last depending on how much you slow the clip down by. So in order to slow down the clip we're going to be using something called time stretch in After Effects which is going to be pretty similar to as to how you do it in Premiere Pro, Vegas, DaVinci Resolve things like that we're essentially just lowering the frame rate of the clip to the point where it's laid back slightly slower this isn't the smoothest way to transition between normal speed and slow motion however this is by far the simplest way and for beginners it's the best way that you can do it if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to how to time remap and go between fast motion slow motion and sync to beats and things like that then make sure you check out the tutorial linked in the top right corner right now which is my tutorial on time remapping it will also be in my tutorials playlist linked at the end of the video as well as in the description and that will teach you how to sync your kills with beats how to speed up and slow down smoothly uh, and other things like that so for this all we're going to do is go to the marker which is exactly on the kill again we're going to press ctrl shift d to split our clip and we're going to go to the point where we want our slow motion to end so i'm going to have it when i look down to the left like i did with all the other ones i'm going to press ctrl shift d and then on this little clip in the middle which you can see is the part which i want to be slowed i'm going to right click go to time time stretch and it's going to bring up this window now 100 is normal speed 200 is half speed so it's going to last twice as long hence why it's 200 so 100 is 26 milliseconds which is how long which is how long this little clip lasts and if i was to put this to 200 it's going to double it to 52. If I want to speed up I can go down to 50 and that's then going to play back at twice the speed. So basically just adjust this to the point where you're happy. So if 100 speed is normal and I want to slow this clip down I'm going to go to something like 200 which will play it back at half speed so two times slow motion. However I'm going to put it at something like 150 so it's just going to be slightly slower rather than half the speed. And then if you hit OK you'll see the length of your clip will increase. So you're just going to drag the top clip to meet the end of it and if we play this through you can see it goes into slow motion slightly during this part. I can over exaggerate it just for the sake of the video. If I go to time stretch and I'll change this to 200 and drag this across just so that it comes across a bit clearer. 
and that just adds a little extra something. It does slow down your audio, which you may not want, so you can disable the audio by clicking over here. Um, and I normally disable all of my audio, and then I just use my sound effects pack, which you can download by clicking the link in the top right corner. It's also in my editing packs playlist, which will be linked in the description, and that'll have all the gun sound effects, all the voice lines, everything like that, so you can add them back after the fact. So for this, I just add the gun sounds back at normal speed, so it doesn't sound messed up like it would if we slowed it down. And for our final effect, it's called Optics Compensation, which is another effect, just like all of the others which comes built in with after effects no plugins required and we're going to go to the point where i get the kill however when you're using a sniper rifle you want to have it to the point where it snaps out of the scope so with the other guns we were just syncing it to the point where the kill appears in the kill feed whereas with sniper rifles you're going to want to change it to the point where it snaps straight out of the scope so the frame after i come out the scope which is this one you'll see the muzzle flash happens and this is where i want to put my marker so i'm going to press the asterisk on my numpad and there you go i've added the marker now to add the effect come over to effects and presets search optics optics compensation you're going to drag that on and just like with the other effects it lends itself really well to be added with them so you just add the scales the flashes and the blurs onto the clip just like you would with the other ones um however with optics compensation i use this before i get the kill whereas with all of the other effects i use them afterwards and i'll show you what i mean by that so now that i've dragged optics compensation onto my clip and hit the down arrow go down to effects and you'll see it down here and now i'm going to go back and now on this keyframe where i come out of the clip i'm just going to hit the stopwatch and you'll see field of view set to zero i'm going to go back one frame i'm going to drag this up to a point where i'm happy so as you drag it you'll see that it does this sort of bevel in effect and that's kind of cool if you want to create this sort of scope effect like that which you can do and i have used in montages in the past however what i tend to do is tick where it says reverse distortion and it does this sort of effect where it zooms out and then in you see like this i'm going to drag it to the maximum that i want it to be at uh, just before it comes out so i'm going to drag it to about this point and then i'm going to go back to the point where i come into the scope now depending on how long you're in the scope for will depend on how far you drag this back in this clip i pretty much go straight into the scope move my crosshair to the raise shoot and that's it so i'm not in the script for very long however if you're in the scope for a while you may not want to add this effect straight away so i'm going to have it to the point where i go straight into the scope which is there and i'm going to keyframe this field of view back to zero and you'll see as i'm scoped in it's going to animate in to the point where i get the kill and it's going to snap out just like that so if i play this you see it come it goes in and pops out just as you get the kill and then what i do is come across to here and you can add the gorge and blur brightness and contrast and scale i didn't bother with the scale but you know you could add that as well as the slow motion if you wanted to you can see it just zooms in pops out flashes and blurs and i think that looks great so that's pretty much it for this tutorial just going over five quick easy effects that you can do for free in after effects no plugins required nothing like that just to add a little bit of extra flair to your edits and montages if you did enjoy or find this video useful please make sure that you leave a comment and let me know as well as liking the video and subscribing for future tutorials if you want to check out my other tutorials there's a playlist in the description as well as at the end of the video make sure you watch some of my edits and montages if you need any inspiration and other than that that's pretty much it for this video and i'll catch you in the next one